we made these little pop filters, cut it out of some old foam that we had. Uh, we're going to put our logo on there and uh, sell them online. <laughs> Welcome to I'll See Myself Out, starring Dan Lee Show and Ryan Patel. And Terry, what's your last name? <laughs> Just Terry. <laughs> Ter Terry is his last name. Terry Terry. And Terry Terry. And Norman Reynolds. Please be advised. How do we start that off? Consider these your only warnings. We will use foul language. There will be spoilers. There's going to be foul language. Today we're talking about the movie Bad Boys for Life. First one we've done straight out of the theaters. Watched it today. So this is relevant to you kids. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm, mm, mm. What you gonna do? What Nobody just gonna leave me by myself? It's like a hybrid of um, Lethal Weapon. A remake of that when they got too old for this shit. That was number four. Lethal Weapon 4. They're writing Bad Boys uh, 4 right now. Michael Bay will be back to st uh, directing that one. Did he direct this one too? Mm, he took a break from this one, but they kept his styling up, I thought. I thought it was a Michael Bay film. Yeah. They, they did a great job with all of the Michael Bay-isms. Main tire focus, the explosions, the things that should explode. All the camera angles, the coloring, the, the, the cut sequences. On point. We were sitting so fucking close to the screen. Oh though. my god. <laughs> the screen was kind of bowed, like... When people were right in the middle, it looked like they were so fucking like, yeah. I could see the inside of Martin Lawrence's ears on both sides. <laughs> I was about to comment, I think, I, I felt like the entire movie, Martin Lawrence, just, just his head's like this. I feel like he has a pyramid head, just from the angle we were watching. His, just, his, jo his jowls are just like rebreathers for somebody who'd be scuba diving. And the perspective, like here's the thing, Martin Lawrence is like one of those guys that when you put on a little bit of weight, it just happens in your, in your head, right? Right. His head still looked pretty big. From from this angle, right. when his body was like huge. That's the other thing. So everybody, everybody in there. If you notice, like the forearms, forearms were huge, but the higher up you got, the biceps were like getting smaller. Yeah. So just everybody looks like Popeye the whole time. <laughs> it took a leak mid uh, movie, but I also wanted to see it from further away to to know if it was me or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it looked fine from the the entrance. I kind of contemplated staying there for the rest of the movie. Well, 40 seconds into the movie, you and I realized that we could suntan while watching this movie, yeah. so. <laughs> so we went full recline in the seats. It made such a difference. But it did. To recline, like when I was oh, yeah. not reclined, I was like, I can't, I can't fucking follow this shit. Oh yeah, subtitles, when you're like, this is how you read subtitles in the front row. In the, one of the beginning scenes where it tells them, uh, it tells the audience that they're in Mexico, I read like not even one third and I was like, I don't care, I'm here for the adventure. <laughs> like, I can't fucking read that fast when it's this close. That probably would have saved a lot of movie going experiences when I was younger, if I could have fully reclined in that seat. At one point I did think about like, what if this was like a 3D movie? Like my brain went like a little haywire because I thought I would just be looking at people's neck fat. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that's not how physics thing. work at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like inside of their folds. Yeah, oh, what am I doing here? Just becomes a last action hero and you're in the movie. This movie felt like a diluted Fast and Furious to me, but like in a collectively more cool way. Saunter and almost mad? Yeah, exactly. I mean, even just the starting scene, just again, is just, I don't know, just the, the amount of catchphrases and the amount of like high-fiving and reiterating of like, of, of the same joke throughout the movie. I was like, I get it now. You had to catch the audience up of the, what's the gap, like 15 years? 2003 was the one that came up previous. Okay, so 17 years? What happened in the first one? If I'm being honest, I think I watched them with my dad when I was like way too young oh, to yeah. be watching them and I remember not a single thing about any of the early ones. In the first Bad Boys, the Miami PD is robbed right from the evidence locker. Uh, it's an inside job and then they become under the scrutiny of internal affairs because like definitely an inside job. Fun fact actually, Bad Boys was the first Michael Bay movie. Really? First one he directed, uh, main, like mainstream. He did the Got Milk uh, ads. What? But there's no explosions in those. Actually, yeah. I do think there's there is a milk explosion. Milk hits like something and then it just reveals milk or something like behind it, doesn't it? This movie really to me felt like um, like a, a much more acceptable and like deliverable style of like Michael Bay action movies. That's why I said earlier the movie felt like like a Fast and the Furious movie, but not in all the ridiculous aspects. Even the action scenes in this film, people do stupid shit and get hurt and get shot and like 
heroes get taken down and like not everybody's fine in the end. Like it's like all of the elements of ridiculous action movies, but like more like more real and more tangible. I did appreciate that that it wasn't just like you running through yeah. and they're not getting hurt. When the main climax scene at the end where they are you know going through and things are exploding behind them and they're just going ah, you know that was bothering me and the fact that all the bad guys were worse than stormtroopers. You're spraying them in hundreds of bullets and all that, and not a single one even just grazes the person. Well, I mean, in some of the scenes, I think that has to be a given just to move the story along, but yeah. I'd say for an action movie, like, especially, again, we said there'd be spoilers, especially in the scene where, like, the police chief gets fucking hit. There were some, there were some things that happened in this movie that I really didn't think would happen, not because they didn't seem possible, it just didn't seem like the kind of genre where they would do that kind of, like they would try to keep the characters rolling, you know? I was upset when he died, actually, that I, I got invested in that character this week. And there wasn't even like, and that was tastefully done, by the way. They didn't have some long, drawn out scene like the mother from, yeah. or the grandmother from fucking Dante's Peak, where you, you spend 18 hours with her death scene. Like the guy, like he had his on screen like moments as like the mentor, yeah. and then they killed him, and it wasn't like, it wasn't five minutes of him dying. It was like he's fucking dead, and they moved on with the story. There's a lot of, there were a lot of good elements to the movie that I really enjoyed. Like I enjoyed the the action, um, I enjoyed um, not just the action, but like the coordination of the action scenes. Like, yeah. it all, like none of it felt really outlandish. Like, there wasn't anybody jumping out of a car over a freeway, catching anybody midair. There wasn't any of that the shit. Helicopter. Except for the helicopter. And even then, that went pretty badly for him. True. To me, there weren't that many scenes out of it that were like super outlandish. And one thing I can at least like acknowledge that was, that I found like I really liked about the movie was like, they kind of spoon fed you. Like, it was a callback to like the, it being like a, a movie that came from now generations that's like now entering like not retirement age but like middle aged or older so all these callbacks to like we've been doing this for so long talking about how long they've been together in their career um kind of like over especially martin lawrence's character like overcoming um the the hurdles of like getting to an older age and becoming a grandfather and stuff but like it didn't feel force fed to me like i noticed it but it didn't feel like inauthentic i guess which is what i liked a lot about the movie see i actually liked the movie you know, because it was so simple in that regard is like it is a very 1990s-esque style movie yeah. but it also had the ridiculous explosions that i expect from yeah. a michael bay movie the only thing that really bothered me about the entire movie was how does a detective in the Met, the Miami Metro Police drive a fucking Porsche. Oh, he's independently wealthy. They address that oh, in okay. earlier films. He has, a, he has a trust fund. Yeah, they, they comment a lot in the first two movies about him being an action junkie. Okay. Like, you're just doing it for the action. You're not actually wanting that. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, is a cop making that much money no. just to kill people? Because no, they kill a lot of fucking people. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Mind? And actually, they address that too, that the cops don't make that much money. Okay. The amount of paperwork that they would have to fucking do is mind-boggling. Also addressed in the earlier yeah, movies. Yeah, they, they talk about how much of a liability um, yeah. both their characters okay. are at certain points, especially after, like, the raids. Like, I mean, he gets... I'm pretty sure he gets, this is another thing I really like about this movie. This is gonna continue on the same topic, but all of the characters, almost all of the characters have a story arc in this one movie. And we've sat through movies that are almost three hours long where nobody's accomplished anything. So I just <laughs> wanna say like it's, there <laughs> are characters. You have a fair point. <laughs> yeah, there are characters in this movie who've been in there for like almost no time at all. Even, um, I can't remember his name right now. Um, I really like his. I really like his acting. He's in uh, Vikings. Um, he plays the uh, the tech nerd. Yeah, I think his name's it's Alex something. If I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna hate myself for this later because I really like Vikings. Norm, can you put it uh, put it right here? Yeah. And pick a different font this time. I'll do what I want. Even his character though actually has a character arc. Like he starts off as like the tech the tech nerd who's who has a bad history of hurting people as a bouncer, and then he even his character comes full circle to being like a psychopath, lunatic, badass by the end of the movie. Right. Yeah. He screams transform as he fucking body checks a joy or like a, a pole yeah. a column I love that scene yeah. because it's just so awesome no he said something different it was like um, probably doing doing something along the lines of like when you're say you're telling your team you're out of ammo yeah I definitely didn't hear him say anything I just heard him go <laughs> and I just hit the pole. But yeah, I feel like this. I feel like this movie like achieved a lot of things that like that nobody would expect from this kind of a movie. Like it had a it had a mostly non-white cast. The only two white people who like had roles like big roles in the film were. Almost all of them got killed as marks for um, the son to kill, right? Um, so almost all of those people were all like rich, evil white people. And then the only like two good white people were like the police chief and uh, and the guy who we were just talking about, um, who was like the hacker. Um, everybody else was like um, Hispanic or Asian or black, which is 
pretty good for an action movie that you think would be like a whitewashed Hollywood hit in most other scripts. So I mean, that's pretty great. And like I said, the character arcs. You know, you got through the whole movie. And the fact that Will Smith is actually still a very good actor. I had concerns about Martin Lawrence going into this movie just because I haven't seen him in anything in so long. So I had like- He made me laugh so fucking hard. Yeah, he's he's still so good. (laughs) Even in these kind of movies where you'd expect someone like Will Smith being that, you know, Oscar style actor, him going into that action movie and still being good, because there's so many actors can't do that action to comedy. Well, he's like a, he's like McConaughey. He's got that big dick energy where whether he's like trying to get an Oscar or he's just like, I'm just having fun making a movie that I, I grew up making. They taking the concept and removing Will Smith and Martin Lawrence from it, the movie would not be as good. Yeah, I think so much of this movie is built off the nostalgia of like having a fan base. It's definitely a, it's definitely I think a large part of it's mm-hmm. probably built off of people like knowing those characters and liking those characters. And loving them. Any dislikes? Like we talked about a lot, like that we've have liked. Were there any dislikes that you had? I, I don't have really? a dislike to add, but I, I, while we're still on the likes, yeah. when we got into the uh, the very first action scene when she's escaping prison, when the antagonist is ex- escaping prison she's doing the like Santa Muerte chant yeah she's she's basically calling the black magic up or some weird thing yeah Yeah. she pulls out that blade and just cuts that lady up real quick first of all that was gory as AF yeah (laughs) AF when the the rush of all the other inmates come in and she's just getting shanked from like seven different it was like 40 stab wounds inside of like six seconds holy shit I was like I don't know what roller coaster I just got on (laughs) this is not the movie that I thought I was coming to see (laughs) yeah it was on another level in terms of gore that was another thing I actually really appreciated about the movie was um none of none of even the action scenes seemed that glossy to me there weren't like a lot of unless I was overlooking them or they were tastefully done I didn't really notice any like super slow motion shots that like took forever and really drew the scenes out or seemed inorganic. Um, like even the even like the hand to hand combat scenes, like the close up um, shootouts, were all like really snappy, really fast, um, and uh, especially the way they portrayed. Um, the uh, the cartel woman's son, um, even all the scenes that he was in, as ridiculous as his skills seemed as a character, it still felt like believable somehow. Like even the scene where Will Smith gets shot, um, the hand to hand combat scene where he's about to get like uh, extorted and robbed when they first dig up the money from the harbor, um, like a lo- like even the scene when. Uh, he and Will Smith fight for the first time. Like when he's trying to take the money, and he yeah. fucking turns into Jet Li. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Like you, you don't expect that, and they do it in a way where like you can kind of accept it. It doesn't seem ridiculous. Even the sidecar motorcycle chase was pretty fucking ridiculous. <laughs> the most ridiculous part about that, apart from the cannon, <laughs> is the fact that he just goes. <clears throat> and then and then the the the, the bike splits into two. Yeah. What was holding that together? Bubblegum? A prayer. He just literally, it was like, it was, it was, <sighs> come on. The only dislike. He just called upon that deep Will Smith strength. Let's roll with the dislikes. What, where are you at? <laughs> Actually, uh, overall, I found it really entertaining. Yeah. Um, I don't, nothing really took me out of the movie. And that's generally my dislike is when something is so outlandish, it pulls yeah. me out or something poorly done. A fucking kick took me out of it. I, I knew this was going to be a different director going in. So I was expecting it to be different than Michael Bay style. I couldn't, I, even looking for it, I don't, I don't think that he did a poor job of mirroring it and that as much as people don't give Michael Bay credit like he's he's phenomenal at at fast cuts and and the cinematography like he was reading he often foregoes a better take for the plot for the aesthetic take his big thing is always looking good sacrificing continuity for a better looking shot he has some hidden gems um again I'm, i'm terrible i can't remember the name of the film right now but there's a film that was i think it was a netflix film um that was about uh a quick response team and it was when there were like riots and they attacked um they attacked a u.s embassy and it was about like a a team of i think they were CIA contracted like ex-military guys um, and I watched the whole movie having no idea it was Michael Bay um, and if you watched it again knowing that you'd be able to pick up some of like the undertones but by the end when I saw the credits and I saw that I thought like I really enjoyed this I didn't pick it apart it didn't feel overly glossy like a Transformers movie I feel like Transformers is like the quintessential Michael Bay like example of a movie um, but yeah like I, I really I really enjoyed it so I think he has some gems I actually also really enjoyed that he makes an appearance I didn't see him in the first one but the this one he was in too is the wedding MC. I was going to say, like, I seem like a big deal at the wedding. And I was like, I don't recognize this person. He's a very confident actor. Yeah. 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 And he's like right here. Yeah. He's, like he's the whole right shot. front. Of, yeah. Yeah. Going into that kind of fight, are, do you think, is it a handgun going to be, because that's like typically we're using, we're just standard handguns against guys with large automatic machine guns and cannons. I'd want to go in with a, with a grenade. Just the grenade launcher? <laughs> just a, no, just like a, a grenade about this big that fires off 
that fires off entire uh, rounds of those little rubber bullets. Those fucking blister givers. We want to thank Brock Street Espresso for having us. And we also want to thank uh, our other sponsor, Man Antler. I think the important things here is uh, the brewery is wonderful and you should try it. Well, how do we, uh, what do we do with the remaining time? <laughs> I'll see myself out. <laughs> Is this thing on? I did that so many times last time. It's like, yeah. it's my own inside yeah. joke. It's only become funny to you. It was never funny to me. <laughs> First time I did it, I was like, you're an asshole. Stop that. <laughs>